Now look, Israel is not Russia. Gaza is not Ukraine. It's a different situation. But cutting off supplies, cutting off heat, cutting off water to civilians, what's the difference? Well, first... Thank you for saying that Israel is not Russia because Israel is not Russia. But Second, civilians are civilians, before, Jake. We are in civilians constant are civilians. contact. Yes, absolutely they are. And they deserve, as I said before, access to water and medicine and food. And we are working actively to ensure that that happens. And I can tell you this morning, Jake, that I have been in touch with my Israeli counterparts just within the last hour uh, who report to me that they have, in fact, turned the water pipe back on in southern Gaza That has been the subject of discussion over the course of the past few days. The United States is going to continue working with Israel, with the U.N., with Egypt, with Jordan, and with a lot of the groups on the ground to make sure that innocent Palestinians get access to those basic necessities and are protected from bombardment because they deserve that right, the right to those necessities and the right to safety and security every bit as much as Ukrainian civilians do or civilians anywhere do. And the United States hasn't made any bones about that. We're working hard on that. We're working to make sure that that is the case as this unfolds. And it's something that has been a high priority for President Biden, for Secretary Blinken, and for myself. But you're not telling the Israelis to let the Palestinian hospitals have power. Our position is that uh, hospitals should be able to function. Hospitals should not be targeted. People should be able to get access to life-saving medical care. We don't qualify these statements. We don't say that there's some kind of caveat to them. These are simple, clear, declarative statements. It is our position that's consistent with the law of armed conflict, the law of war. It's consistent with our view as we have presented it. And I would just say, Jake, that there's a lot of reports in the fog of war about things that happen. We're not going to respond to every one of those because uh, we will seek clarity in the, the appropriate way, but we will never back off our basic principles and our basic proposition, which we have made both publicly and privately, about our view about how civilians have to be protected. I haven't asked you of any of the Hafaga war stories. I've seen stories that blame Israel for things that later on, it turns out, Hamas did them. I get it. I understand. But we have reports, and I'm sure you have them too, that hundreds of the individuals stuck in Gaza are American citizens. You know that too. There are also hundreds of... uh, thousands of Americans in Israel that are trying to get out also. And the Biden administration is doing a lot to get those individuals out. 29 of the individuals killed by Hamas were American. Um, and, and there are, I think, what is it, like something like um, 40 Americans that are unaccounted for who were maybe taken prisoner by Hamas. But I want to talk to you about one Palestinian-American woman we talked to uh, named Hanin Okal. She's from New Jersey. She's got three kids, eight, two, and two months. Uh, I sent you the interview we did with her earlier in the week. She got to the border, the Rafah crossing. She can't get out. She can't get out of Gaza because the Egyptians won't open the crossing. Listen to what she told me earlier this week. We tried to contact the U.S. embassy so many times. Unfortunately, they couldn't help us at all. I contacted them through the phone, via email. I texted and I, I called different numbers, but nobody, uh, I couldn't hear back from any. We are all here feeling abandoned that, and we're feeling that we're left alone. I don't know how many billions of dollars we give the Egyptians every year. Tell, why can't you tell President Sisi to open the border to let Americans out? We have told President Sisi to open the border to let Americans out. The situation there at the crossing is actually more complicated. The Egyptians have, in fact, agreed to allow Americans to depart to get safe passage through the Rafah crossing. The Israelis agreed to ensure that the area around there would be safe, as, at least as far as they were able to do so. The question when we tried to move a group yesterday was actually Hamas taking steps to try and stop that from happening. <sighs> but we are continuing to work this around the clock, and we are doing all that we can to make sure that American citizens who are in Gaza can get through that border crossing. Secretary Blinken, in fact, is in Egypt today meeting with the president of Egypt. This is at the top of his list to help get those American citizens out of Gaza. Uh, Anyone uh, who is a U.S. citizen should have the right to free passage through there and then have the U.S. government facilitate their travel home. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt that the biggest problem in all of this is Hamas. Jake Sullivan, thank you so much. Appreciate it.